Well, we're down in the pits with Liam Burke. Liam Burke, you took out the Pro Sport Championship last year. Now we're taking the step to Pro. Sure am, Steve. Um, we've just made a huge jump to the 265 tyres. Um, the difference is phenomenal. I mean, yesterday the track was real slippery due to them obviously just uplifting all the dirt off it and going with the new tyres. Um, it was a bit um, confusing because the track was so slippery today. Um, the grip was just going up and up and up a level. So we're slowly adjusting to these things and um, hopefully starting to put on a show for you guys. Well, a show is going to be. Let's switch right now to pro qualifying. Drifting is a sideways evolution from traditional motorsports. Each driver competes for points given out by a select panel of judges. The three major scoring criteria are line, angle and style. Together they form a score out of 100. Line is a racing line marked out by clipping points. Drivers need to consistently hit these areas to score maximum points. Angle is how much rear slip angle a car produces. Competitors need to engage as much opposite steering lock as possible to receive a higher score. Style is a combination of driving technique, showmanship, brake application, throttle control and overall driver ability. Teams and drivers have two laps in qualifying to start the competition. The top qualifiers move through into a seated battle tree, battling through each bracket until the top four drivers compete for the final podium. A drift battle requires each driver to take turns leading and chasing. The lead driver's objective is to match or better their performance in qualifying. The chase car's objective is to get as close as possible to the rear quarter of the leading car, using it as a mobile clipping point. The judges' lineup for the 2019 season features a wealth of experience as Brendan Dunker returns as line judge. More than 15 years in the sport, a D1NZ veteran and series technical advisor with 35 points up for grabs. Dan Mackey is back again based out of Sydney with the High Tech Drift Australia Series, another driver with more than 15 years experience. He's been a drift judge since 2013 as well as joining the lineup for the annual International Drift Challenge as part of World Time Attack. The final judge is a returning face to the D1NZ Series. 2005 New Zealand drifting champion Adam Richards completes the lineup. A D1NZ veteran who's represented New Zealand on the world stage, competing in the D1 All Stars as well as the European Drift Championship. The D1NZ Drifting Championship has achieved some big feats over the last decade, creating Australasia's first ever indoor drifting circuit at Dunedin's iconic Forsyth Bar Stadium. It's part of a new trend for stadium style motorsport around the world, and this weekend is no exception for the opening round of the 2019 D1NZ season. The custom-made concrete line drifting course has been prepared from underneath the Speedway clay at Trust Power Bay Park Stadium in Tauranga, the beautiful Bay of Plenty hosting the opening round of the D1NZ series for the very first time. The drifting circuit at Bay Park remains the same as 2018 with a few minor alterations to the competition criteria. Cars will launch from a standing start with a short run up into the turn one sweeper. Entry speeds anywhere between 80 and 120 kilometers per hour and it's a full power acceleration into the initiation start line and onto the big wall ride, a long outside clipping zone to start the course. Drivers need to come off the sweeper to a fast snappy switch to an inside clip on the left hand side of the track. From here it is a smooth wide switch onto an outside clipping zone where drivers will be allowed to use left foot braking to fill the outside zone where a smooth wide line will carry them through to the next switch hitting the rear clipping point on the right hand side of the track. Setting themselves up for the final left hander, a full smooth power arc through the return loop and through to the finish line. Of Gargan Kang will be the first car out in the pro um, out on track for the pro championship. Great to see Gargan back behind the wheel of a drift car with a D1NZ RB30 DET 750 horsepower machine out of Auckland and accelerates away. So Gargan Kang rung number one D1NZ Pro Championship qualifier. So straight up to the war he goes. Holding his line through Casper Transmissions. Comes through. Does dip over slightly. That's going to be a points deduction. And is shallow coming out of the turbo smart zone. Comes through and how snappy can that transition be? 
certainly looking good. Comes out of the Casper transmission though. Hard on the gas, powering through. Back onto the front straight for Gargan Kang. Let's see what Jesse Greenslade and the NZ Girls Pariah S15 can do. Certainly winding on the angle. Big mistake though for Jesse Greenslade. Again, dropping a wheel off as well. So we're certainly going to see a heavy deduction for that big mistake. How big a deduction it's going to be, I don't know, as he powers out of the final turn down the front straight and brings that S15 to a stop, the Pariah NZ Girls. Yes, first place, 61, Gargan Kang, Jesse Greenslade, 32.5. And here comes another newbie to the D1NZ Pro Field, Jordy Cole. Gets right up by the wall. Fills out that zone nicely. Let's see what he can do as he comes through. Just misses and gets nice and tight, close to that, that cone clip. Not quite filling that outer zone through the turbo smarts, but certainly better than the last two cars we've seen. See what Geordie can do as he heads back up to the wall. Three wheeling it. Certainly not afraid is our Geordie Cole. What a run, nice run, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands... Let's see what these two can do as they take on the big boys moving up a class. So release from the line, off we go. Into the first turn. Liam Burke, he's heading for the concrete. Lifting up that right front tyre, fills up that section. As he comes through into the... He looks like he may have missed slightly that clip, but still looking pretty tidy. Smashes that out of zone clip up through NZ Vapor, off through Casper Transmissions on the gas, riding out by the wall. Liam Burke, great drive by Liam Burke. I'm sure the uh, of Shane Allen, 900 horsepower, <coughs> and Shane Allen going right at the top. Firmly planting the Rattler Mustang up by the wall. Now he heads low. Well, unfortunate as he goes through the cone clip, there was either one or two points or uh, two wheels off. That is going to be a heavy points deduction. But a great f start of his lap, great to finish. He's right out by the concrete, kissed it there. That's exactly what the judges want to see. But just coming through that cone section where we've got the inner clip coming off the wall right out there. Let's see what Jerry Zoo can do though. I know the judges have been really happy with the way that he's been performing throughout the day. He's been running a little bit. I believe he's been doing some drifting overseas in China as well as a few other places. So let's see what Jerry Zoo can do. Just a nice first start. Comes through. Throws a little bit of dust around. Still comes up towards that zone and fills it nicely. Coming through the Mimico spots up through TTI and then ventures out towards the wall up through the NZ Vapor. Finishes off on the limiter through Casper and it comes to a stop as we release the Cryptopia GT86 Supra of Jody Verholz, Verholz, so Jody Donovan, sorry. So Donovan powering out through through Casper. Cone clip clears it nicely. Can she fill that outside? She's right out there. But a straight line. So I think we're going to see a zero score with a big straight. And off we go in that FC RX-7, powered by an LS2 V8, 420 horsepower. And look at him up by the wall. Holding massive speed, dips over slightly. I don't know if that's going to be a point deduction though. Looked pretty close to the line. I'm not sure if it was on it, but powering out, coming through. How aggressively, and he hits it clean. The TTI clip and back up via NZ Vapor through the Casper transmission zone. A nice lap for Andrew Redwood, powering out of the final corner. Slowing down. 
drives in the Pro Championship, drove his way here to go drifting this weekend, Joel Patterson. Nice and high, filling the zone beautifully, comes through, tight through the clip. How high can he run that little Toyota? I can say he's going to run it straight out by the line that the judges want to see. Big snap. Too big a snap. He was on for all money to take pole position with that run. He's certainly been running very, very clean runs. All... So little Sui Baker takes the line. He's filled that zone nicely. Let's see how he comes through the... Not nicely, to tell the truth. And we'll finish trying to park inside a Cabalco digger. From 8th, 9th and 10th, all with the DNQ. Did not qualify so far as we go straight up with Troy Jenkins. First run of the 2019 Pro Championship. Looked like he might have dipped the wheel coming through the cone clip. Running that beautiful centre line. Aggressive on the snap back into the left-hander. And feeds it a whole of Bruce Tannock. RB32 power plant producing 800 horsepower. What can Bruce Tannock do as he goes up through Casper? Running a nice line through Casper. Holds on to it through NZ Vape. That's exactly what the judges want to see. Fills out the outer zone. Does come through and hit the back end exactly where the judges want to see. Powering out. So a, a nice, solid run by Bruce Tannock in the mag and turbo Achilles radials. S30 JZ power plant. Around 700 horsepower. As Ben heads straight up to the concrete. Settles the car down so he can get a second grab at it. Holding through the NZ Vapor zone. Touches that uh, section there as well. I don't think the drivers can see it. I'd be pretty annoyed if I was the drivers because you can't actually see that zone. So you're driving kind of blind because of the amount of dust on there. But let's see how far up the wall he's going to go coming out of turn. The final turn onto the front straight. Ben Jenkins, what a drive. All right, let's see what his parking abilities are like. Edwards makes the bump. He still sits behind Lee and Burke. That was a great run by Burke. But let's see what the Ryko 24-7 Mimico 186 30 b Turbo. He's already started by the wall, and he's heading even further up it. Adam Davies. But Davies puts a wheel off coming through that section. Winding on the lock and heading back out towards the concrete wall again to finish off his lap here at Bay Park for the round number one qualifier of the 2019 D1NZ Drifting Championship. Jordy Cole with a 71.5 back, but Adam Davies, a good run, but it would have been even higher. I think he would have come close to taking a top spot after his run if he hadn't hit the the dirt. But what? let's see what Vinny Langhorn can do in the Euphoric Motorsport. Laurel, Vinny coming through, he absolutely smashes that clip. Running the high line. Come on, Vinny Langon, you can do it. Midsection, how aggressive can he be? Comes through with a weight shift up to NZ Vapor. He drove this car here to go drifting this weekend. Is he going to drive away with top spot after qualifying? A nice run for Vinny Langhorn in the Freedom Pools. Cooper tires. So back up the front, the Hartley Engines and Motorsport Parts Trader NZ. S14 of Jaron Olive Krona. Listen to it scream. Olive Krona right up by the wall. Holding a nice line. 
Brings it out a little bit further than some. Let's see what happens through here. Misses that. Can he fill that outer zone? He is right out by the outer zone. Comes through the centre section. Now needs to do a nice flip on TDI. And then back on the loud pedal he goes. He's out by the wall. That's where the judges want. He can bring the nose down there. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jaron Olive Croner. All right, we've got hashtag because Jace Brown out on track now in the Vital Tires machine. And listen to it scream. Frankenstein monster coming through. Comes under Mimico and heads back out towards the wall. Jace Brown. Gets on the brakes, pulls it up. The Speed Foe Falcon S15 of Carl Thompson. Thompson this time. Heads up the top. Zips the tyre off. Still filling the outer zone. Hammering the throttle. The judges want aggression through this section of the track. They certainly got it. Carl Thompson powering out of the final turn. And look at the smoke billowing off. Great drive. Well, next up will be the Cryptopia North Island Forklift. It's Clyde behind the wheel as Donnie D. Drew Donovan. He won this competition. He won this round last year. He's wanting to go back to back. He wants to go further and take the championship. Is this going to be Donnie D's year? Puts a wheel off and a lot further up than what we've seen. He's still filling out the outer zone, but that's going to be a decent size. Almost looked like he was going to over-rotate at that section there, but gets a nice snappy transition back into the left-hander, and again, heavy on the throttle. Venturing out towards that wall again. He's got ready to rumble on the windscreen. Let's see what he can do as he fires it down the front straight into Casper for the first time. Run one, Fanger Dan. He's bringing it out towards the wall. We saw massive lock last year. A little bit shallower than what we've seen other people push, but he's keeping on the line. Can he foot out this outer zone as he gets back on the power? Right out by the outside line, exactly where the judges want to see. Winding on the angle, snaps through into the left-hander. Fanger back out towards the wall. Right on the wall, driving out. Back onto the front straight. Great drive. Qualify one for Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Well, waiting to be released with the Ryko 24-7 Mimico S14. Dave Stedman behind the wheel. Stedman this time going right up the top. Looks like he's grazing the concrete and holds it in deeper. Dips it over. Can he fill that outer zone? Gets on the gas. Looked like there might have been a correction. I don't know how happy the judges are going to be about that section coming out of the teardrop. But back up to the wall he goes. Dave Stedman. He's one of your local hopes. Come on, Toadunga. Put your hands together. Dave Stedman. A little bit less than some of the other drivers out there. But he won the first round last year at Wellington. He wants to win the first round this year as well. Matty Hill, what's he got for this challenging track? Well, straight up to the concrete he goes. Doesn't hold it as deep, but he's got a nice line coming up into the teardrop. Well, certainly great angle. Might have come off a little bit shallow, but certainly the angle will certainly get points coming through into the... Back up into the wall ride. Goes past NZ Vapor into Casper Transmission. He's up by the concrete. I think he was in the concrete. Comes down onto the front straight. Matty Hill. R35 Skyline. RB34 Power Plant. Former New Zealand Drift King. Darren Kelly takes the track. Kelly straight up to the concrete. He goes. It looks like the rear wing of that car is railing. It gets even deeper. What a start for this lap. Comes through into the turbo smart filling that outer zone comes back mid hits his clip firing it back out on track he heads back for the wall is this going to be enough for the r35 skyline 
to take pole position. It looked like a beautiful clean lap. We'll go straight to Templeman, but this man wears the one on the door, as I said. He is your two times and current Drip King, Cole Armstrong from Tauranga. Here's your local lad. Has he got enough to pop up to the top spot? Armstrong comes through into the teardrop. Perfect line to start with. Running right up by the wall, exactly where the judges want. Runs midsection. What's he going to do at this point here? Certainly putting on a smoke show. Is Cole Armstrong. He's got a fire in the back there. So that, uh, I think if he can get the car going, that fire should go out. But if it doesn't, so we can see the fire on the screen. And he's been told, get out of there, because he's actually coming to get himself put out. So uh, Bryce will be on comms to him, or one of the team, as uh, Brucey in the... Well, you get out of the way, Bruce. Quickly, come on, pull the trigger. Nine hundred horsepower, and off we go for Dane and Templeman. Well, a clean run, but certainly filling out that zone beautifully through Turbo Smart. Comes up and hits the TTI clip. Let's see what he can do as he goes up to the top of the wall. Dana. Straddens up at the end. Ben Wilkinson, that car looking more like a pro sport or a... Uh, but certainly driving it like a pro. There's some speed in that car coming out of the final turn. He's getting grip. Firing it through. But that is going to be very costly. Really shallow. He's going to be lucky not to straight line. Manages to transition back into the left-hander. And riding the wall out, Ben Wilkinson. That was it for the first run. Back to the second run, and it's the Black Bull Liquor R32 Skyline of Gargan King out on track for his second run of the night here at Bay Park, the 2019 D1NZ Pro Championship Qualifier. Nice clean run for Gargan. Dirt Turbo, though, is going to be a points deduction. One points, Gargan King drops into 12th place. Jesse Greenslade, 32.5 after his first run of qualifying, will certainly need to make a big improvement. Nice flowing transmission, uh, transition, sorry, as he fires that as the final turn onto the front straight. Clean lap, definitely better than a 32.5. So he was certainly better, but only by three. Well, the Coastal Spa and Pool FC RX7 of Geordie Cole. And look how far up the wall Geordie Cole's going. It's great through the clone clip. Maybe not as high up as the judges will want to see, but every other part of the lap so far has been great. Geordie Cole, back up the wall he goes. Absolutely no weight over the left front wheel. Powering out, hits the concrete once. Left-hander jumped up on the wall. Let's just make sure that he finished his lap. You see that again, no weight at all over that left front wheel because he's riding in the perfect place. Just kisses the concrete, disintegrates. And this happened after, and like how he was able to pull that card. The button is pressed, and we are sending Liam Burke. Well, let's see what Liam can do. 
settles the car down, applies a little bit of brake, still running a nice high line. Let's see what he can do as he comes through the cone clip. Slightly off, but still a nice clean lap. Liam Burke powers out of the final section. I don't know if it's going to be an 80 point pass, but it looks pretty spectacular. The Mount Shop Rattler Mustang, the GT500 of Shane Allen. Shane Allen again going, heading towards the concrete. Certainly dialing in the angle. Comes through, he certainly hit that outside, the uh, inside clip coming through. <laughs> really nice run, come on Shane, keep your foot on it. Just watching the judges' faces. That's what we like to see. Nice drive by Shane Allen. Score, my apologies, Shane Allen did improve up to 20th position with a 66 point run. <laughs> I certainly thought it was better than that, but I'm obviously not a judge. Jerry Zhu in the NOB building machine next out on track. Cryptopid, Cryptopia 2JZ GT86 Supra of Jody Donovan. Donovan did not qualify after her first qualifying run. Needs to complete a, a lap to go into tomorrow's battle. Clean to start with. Let's go, Jody. That is a nice line this time. Jody venturing out towards the wall. Keeps her foot on it. Just needs to drive out of the final turn. And it is a nice, clean. It's the Nanking Tires FCR X7 time. Andrew Redwoods hits the track. Up towards the concrete he goes. Riding it hard. Does come down slightly, but still washes up to the pink stuff, which is a little bit further than what we've seen some of the other drivers come through. Hits that last clip on the cone clip. Doesn't quite fill all of the Turbo Smart zone. Certainly a nice aggressive switch into the left hander and back on the loud pedal. Hits the concrete once, keeps his foot on it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Andrew Redwood. Redwood. So Joel Patterson. He needs to do what he's been doing all day, and that is putting down scorching laps. Certainly filling the outer zone nicely. Just need to get him off the turn. He did not qualify after the first one. He just needs to finish so he can be in the main game tomorrow for round one of the D1NZ National Drifting Championship. And to go drifting this weekend, he is currently sitting on top. Little Stewie Baker, the next to take the track. Again, another driver who just needs to complete a circuit to be in the main game tomorrow. And a nice finish for Stewie Baker. Eighth position. So Troy Jenkins' turn to take the track. Troy Jenkins sitting in 20th position after his first lap. Will certainly be wanting to improve it. Very quick. Coming down into the teardrop section. Fills out the outer zone, just coming off. I think he's already crossed that clip though. Comes through and hits TTI. Back up through NZ Vapor and around Casper Transmissions for the final time.
So Bruce Tannock is in the 25th position right now with a 59.5 and really does need to improve. Good way to start. Good speed coming through the first section. Puts a wheel off coming through the cone clip. Fills out the outer zone though as he comes through Mimico. Switches through TTI. Out past NZ Vapor and starts to ride the wall. Is this a going to be enough? Jesse Greenslade has been bumped. Shane Allen is in a new bump position. Ben Jenkins, next driver out on track. Ben Jenkins, 10th position after his first run with a 73 point pass. Slade out in 25th, Shane Allen on the 24th place is in the bump position. Wow, straight up to the concrete, he's in the concrete, Adam Davies railing it. Let's see if he can fill this out of zone. Slight correction as he fires it out of the final section. Beautiful run for the Riker. So we have what? We've released them? I don't know. Um, we should probably be cutting back to what's happening. We've got Vincent Langhorns out on track. Uh, why? I don't know. So I don't know who released. So we've got a big mistake by uh, Vinnie Langhorn through the section, so I think that will be... Check that out, Vinnie Langhorn, cool guy. From his first run, Olive Krona. Sat in 17th position after his first one, the parts trader in ZS14. Motoring out of the first turn. Nice job hitting the clip, we need him to fill that out of, out of zone. Slight correction for him, I don't think it's going to be a points deduction, or not too much of one anyway. Back up to the wall we go, Jared Old Kroner, absolutely screaming, sitting on 8,000 RPM, and look at him right in that concrete. What a great drive by Jared Old Kroner in his second run of qualifying. Position now, 16th position for Jared Old Kroner, 71 points. Jace Brown leaves the line, and it will be his turn now to throw it in. A little bit low down the track for Jace Brown, so he's gonna be slightly offline. Let's see what he can do for the second half. Thompson's turn this time in the Falcon S15. That man is certainly dialing on the angle. Just brutal on the loud pedal. Carl Thompson. Certainly sending it today here at Bay Park. So we saw a wheel off coming through the cone clip, which is going to be a slight points deduction, but we'll see what happens. So Drew Donovan, the next out on track. Donny D, he's certainly running high. You can see him kissing the concrete as he comes through. That was certainly deeper than Carl Thompson. Doesn't put a wheel off. Holding it through. A 
and drives down on a very, very smart run. Let's have a look and see where Drew Donovan was positioned, after, sorry, after his first run. And off goes Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Taking out the rear corner. You wanted them in the concrete, he was happy to put it there, hits it again and brings Stedman in the Ryko 24 7 Mimico S14. Stedman goes straight up to the top. Powers out of the section, he's running a high line. And you don't get much higher than that. Kisses the pink as he goes through. Might have put a wheel off as he powers out of the teardrop. Running that high line, he's certainly got a bit between his teeth, running that central line, snap backs and hits the TTI clip, and running right back up the top shelf again. I can also tell you that Drew Donovan's moved into third, Joel Patterson equal. So Matty Hill out on track. Nice tidy start of the lap for Matty Hill. Switches down into the teardrop. And that's a nice run for Matty Hill. Venturing straight back up the top, he goes out of the big sweeping left hander onto the front straight. Matty Hill, great. As Darren Kelly in the Nissan New Zealand Nismo R35 Skyline heads off into the right-hander. Up by the wall he goes. It's interesting to see how far they get. A little bit shallow in that pink section than we've seen other people. May have dropped the wheel coming through in, and then holding a beautiful line though coming out. That is an absolutely incredible final sector. So Cole Armstrong, your two times and defending. Drift King in the V Energy R34 Skyline. Cole, clean and tidy. Winding on the angle. He is right on the line, right on the limiter. Powering out, ladies and gentlemen, has he done enough? Cole Armstrong is going through into the main game. So that leaves two more drivers to go. Dayton Templeman and the Zick Motor Oils. E46 BMW, 1,000 horsepower, 2JZ power plant, and look at the speed that Danon fires it in to the teardrop section, running a beautiful line as he powers out of the section. Danon sitting in 23rd position with a possible 24 places. A great drive, 69. And then there was one, the Pack and Save Botany Downs S15 of Ben Wilkinson. Wilkinson firing into the big right hand sweeper. Putting on a smoke show. Comes through the cone clip before moving out into Turbo Smart. Shallow out of Turbo Smart. Now he's got to hit the TTI clip. And the big. Left hand sweep at a finish. Look at the speed that he finished that lap. Ben Wilkinson was sitting in 20. Yeah, Steve. Well, I'll tell you what, that was, uh, it was definitely a bit of a, um, a mixed bag. There was a, a few guys that we had watched and practiced and we really wanted to, you know, or expected to see them up top. 
Um, Cole Armstrong goes through and DQs, has to wait till the very, very end to work out whether or not he'd actually go through into the main game, finishing in about seventh position. Yeah, and I tell you what, the uh, the run that he had to put through, knowing that that was his only one chance. Um, yeah, hey, that was that was that was a pretty impressive run for a banker. I think it put him in uh, seventh place. So we're just waiting on uh, confirmation of uh, the top twenty-four. Yeah. Are we going to see any changes? I know that you had a look at a, another another replay. Yeah, no, we did have, no, have another look at a replay. We like to do that just to make sure that we're, um, we're all clear with uh, if there's anything like a wheel off or something like that. But um, no, we're, we're quite happy with the decisions that were made. Um, yeah, for, for us, I think it was, um, it was very uh, different to what we expected to see. Um, but hey, you know, it's, it's great. You know, it's great that the drivers really mixed it up. Um, that's the luck of the draw sometimes, you know. You find sometimes uh, the guys will bank a, um, bank a run and then on their second run, they go, you know, balls out as such. But you know, it's like the tennis serve, isn't it? Yeah. Except but, in reverse. But sometimes that puts them, um, you know, in a, in a different spot that they're not used to and, and they lose a couple of points. So. All right. Well, I'm just uh, waiting for confirmation so I can read it. Uh, look, thank you very much, Brendan, for uh, giving us all that information. We're going to talk to you a lot more, of course, uh, tomorrow when we bring on the battles. Sounds great. Thanks, Steve. Preliminary results, I have got Carl Thompson with an 86 point run in first position from Dave Steadman with 82 in second. Drew Donovan with an 81 equal with Joel Patterson for third position. Fanger Dan Hullhouse and Geordie Cole both on an 80.5 in fifth. Cole Armstrong managing to fight back with a 79.5 in seventh from Andrew Redwoods with a uh, equal with Jace Brown and 78 points in eighth place. From there we go back to that, sorry, that includes Adam Davies. Dan and Temple managed, managed to, move, to move into 11th place from Ben Wilkinson, Darren Kelly, Stewie Baker, Liam Burke, Ben Jenkins, Matty Hill, Jody Donovan, Vinnie Langhorn, Jaron Olive Croner, Gargan Kang, Jerry Zhu and Bruce Tannock, but uh, not moving into the top 24, sadly, will be Shane Allen and Jesse Greenslade, having to do it all over again at round number two. Look, ladies and gentlemen, if you are leaving the venue, thank you very much for coming along. To those people out there in the wonderful world of Facebook, thanks for tuning in to D1NZ 2019 Drifting Championship. I'm Steve Daniel. It's been an absolute pleasure.